Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be taking a little bit of liquid metal, which you've probably seen kicking around the uh, tech tuber space, especially with cooling uh, delitted CPUs, but we're actually gonna be applying this liquid metal to the die of a GPU, specifically that 1080 Ti that's over my shoulder. Let's check it out. Now, before we do exactly what this video is all about in applying this liquid metal to my 1080 Ti, we do need to get a couple of benchmarks and uh, these are gonna be baseline benchmarks. So we're just gonna go with completely stock. We're not gonna do any overclocking with this at all, though that may come in a later video. But what I'm gonna do is set the fan curve to just 60% and then run heaven benchmark on a loop until temperature stabilized. We'll take note of both the temperature and the core clock because again, the uh, core clock is gonna fluctuate based on the temperatures and if this does its job, the core clock should even at stock completely everything except the fan curve being set to a static 60%, it should actually improve the core clock as well as temperatures. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. And then obviously down the road, we'll have to take the car back apart and see how the uh, liquid metal after maybe six months is holding out. But we can only do that in the future today. Let's get those benchmarks ran and then let's uh, pull this card apart and see what we can do with this liquid metal. Okay, so this test has been running for a couple of minutes and the things that we're really wanting to pay attention to here are the core clock and we're staying right now bouncing between 1898 and 1923 megahertz on that core clock and then of course we're going to be looking at the temperatures which we're running at 68 degrees celsius and again everything here is completely stock except the fan curve which is set to a static 60 percent so i'm just going to let this run for a while and see where our core clock and where our temperature stabilize and then we'll take this card apart and get that liquid metal applied Okay, so this test has been running for a little bit over 10 minutes now, and you'll notice that our temperatures have sort of stabilized in the 77, 78 range, getting down as low as 75, and getting as high as 79 for brief periods. You'll also notice the core clock is bouncing between 1835 to 1911 megahertz, depending on what scene and where in the sort of temperature cycle we are, whether we're closer to 75 degrees Celsius or closer to 79 degrees Celsius. So those are sort of our loose parameters. Let's go ahead and pull out this card, put on liquid metal, put it back in the system, and see just where we're at. Now, to be clear, I just pulled out this card and it is very, very hot right now, especially with this metal back plate on it. It's just tough to touch right now. So I'm actually gonna let it cool down for a good little bit so it can be actually easy to handle and I can touch the thing without burning my hand. So, We'll give this just a minute and uh, when it's cooled down, we'll get right to it. Though while we are waiting, I guess I can go ahead and go over some tools. The first thing that you're actually gonna need here is some isopropyl alcohol and that's just to clean off the uh, thermal paste that is already being used on the graphics card. You're also gonna need either some paper towels or if you prefer like a microfiber cloth, this one is actually already kind of dirty. Uh, those work really well for cleaning off thermal paste as well. Now, I'm actually going to be using some uh, fingernail polish, and the reason for that is you can actually form a little bit of a protective barrier around the dye on your GPU by using uh, some uh, nail polish like this. That way, if for some reason the, uh, the liquid metal moves around a little bit, or maybe it just sort of accidentally flies onto some of the surrounding area around the dye by using some of this stuff, you shouldn't actually short circuit anything. You should still be in good shape. The only other thing you're gonna need is a screwdriver with small Phillips head bits, and I have an iFixit kit, which will work perfect for that purpose. Okay, now that we have the cooler off of this card, we can start removing Tim. Now, one thing to note here is that this is nickel plated, uh, the cold plate here on the cooler. So if this were aluminum, you could not use liquid metal with this because gallium reacts with aluminum and uh, it can do some pretty wicked things including uh, breaking down lock bodies. If you want to check out that video, I'll go ahead and link it here uh, because it's actually kind of cool to watch gallium completely break a normal lock that's made of aluminum. But 
Imagine if that was uh, the case with your cooler, obviously liquid metal would not hold up. Luckily, we're working with nickel plating here, so this should be fine, and uh, we can go ahead with the project. Now, the next thing I'm actually gonna do is apply a little bit of this nail polish just around the edge of the die. Now, that is a pretty large die area, but I don't want these little uh, surface-mounted components coming into contact with liquid metal, whether it be on purpose or accidentally. So we're just gonna kinda coat them with a little bit of fingernail polish to protect them in case something unfortunate like that did happen. Okay, now that our warranty is fully void, we can go ahead and apply liquid metal just after we give that fingernail polish a few minutes to go ahead and dry up and get really settled in there before we start messing around. Now, because liquid metal has a tendency to sort of fly out of the syringe pretty quickly, what I'm actually gonna do is put a little bit on this paper towel first before transferring it over to the dye. That way I don't accidentally spray it all over the card and mostly because liquid metal is just really difficult to clean up once it's all over something. So it's just a lot easier to do it this way. So now that I have a little drop of it, I'm actually going to go ahead and drop it right on top of the die. And this is where you take your Q-tip and sort of carefully spread it around. Remember, a little bit of liquid metal goes a really long way. Okay, now that the liquid metal is applied and set, we are ready to put the cooler back together and we're gonna test how this thing performs. And of course, when you put these things back together, don't forget all of the little connectors that you unconnected when you took this apart. This particular card was a little bit of a bear because I had three of those little guys and they are quite fragile, so obviously be careful. And before you blow up the comments, yes, I am aware that a couple of these thermal pads did get torn a little bit as I took the card apart. Um, I may go back and replace those once I get replacement thermal pads, but for the moment and for testing sake, since we're not testing temperatures of the VRAM or of the memory chips themselves, it'll be fine. I'll go back and change those at a later time once I get some thermal pads ordered. Okay, so Heaven Benchmark has been running now for about 15 minutes, and what we're seeing is at the absolute high, 71, 72 degrees Celsius there. The low core clock looks like it's around 1860. Every now and then it drops a little bit lower, but then it does jump all the way back up to 1923. So the range is definitely a little bit higher with the liquid metal than with the stock thermal interface material. And again, everything here is completely stock settings, no overclocking. The only thing I've changed is once again, that fan curve is at 60%. So there it is, liquid metal on a GPU will in fact help lower those temperatures, but it's not something I would actually recommend doing. For one thing, it doesn't actually lower temperatures a crazy amount. We're talking between five and 10 degrees under full load, which will give you slightly higher clocks, at least with modern graphics cards, and may give you the ability to have a slightly higher overclock with your graphics card, and if nothing else, will give you slightly lower noise levels but the cost could be pretty significant. So you saw while I took my card apart, I definitely tore a couple of those thermal pads, which I'll wanna go back later on and uh, patch up and put on new thermal pads, especially for the ones that I did tear. So that adds a cost. The liquid metal itself is not exactly cheap as far as thermal interface materials go. And then of course, I did void the warranty with that graphics card, which I've had long enough now. I don't even believe it's in warranty anyways. But all those things combined, you could do a lot of damage to a graphics card and have no recourse with it because you avoided that warranty anyways on top of the added cost of the liquid metal and potentially thermal pads, there's a lot of risk for a little bit of reward. So this is the card that I do most of my gaming with anyways, so I'll be keeping a close eye on it as I go along over the next several months. Here in about six months, we'll probably tear it back down and see just what type 
of degradation is going on under the hood there with that liquid metal, if any at all. So I'm very curious to see that. But if you like this content, go ahead and give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you think about liquid metal in general. Is this something you're interested in or would you even consider doing it in the first place? And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you guys in the next video.